Hello friends, welcome back to Zero Math. In today's session, we are going to discuss about important concept in geometry that is line and angles. Let's first understand very important concept of point. A circle which does not have radius is called point, which means if radius of the circle is zero, it is called as point. To understand this, let's draw a circle. You can see the radius of this circle is R. If you keep reducing this radius till zero, eventually you will get smaller smaller circle and eventually you will end up getting just a dot which is a point. The another definition of point is it has no length, no breadth and no thickness. Basically if you see this is a point, so what is the length of this point? It is 0. What is the breadth of this point? B is also equal to 0 and what is the thickness of this point? that is also equal to 0. It is also a 0 dimensional figure which means it does not have either x axis, y axis or z axis. It is a dimensionless figure. Now let us understand another basic concept what is line. So joining of points is called as line. So it has infinite length and no end point. To understand let us draw few points and we will connect this point. So you can see we have formed a line. You can see we can extend this line in both direction infinitely and it does not have end points. In other words, we can say line is a set of infinite points that should be in one dimension. So what does one dimension means? It has only one axis. So you can see this can be extended in only x axis. Okay, and not in the y axis and this can be extended in both end points. Now let us understand the type of lines. So type of lines are straight line and curved line. If the distance between two points is shortest, it is a straight line. Let us take two points like this and try to join them. You can see this is the straight line. Not necessary I can join these two points in this way only. I can join these points in this way as well. You can see in a semicircular or circular way. So this is also a line. However, you can see the distance between two points is not shortest. That is why it is a curved line. Now if you understand what is straight line and curved line, we can safely say that circle is also a curved line. It is getting interesting, is not it? Let us understand the next important concept that is line segment. So when two end points are marked on a line, it is called as line segment. Let us draw a line and I will draw two points on the line. So this is A and this is point B. So this AB is called as line segment. You can see AB has finite length that is we can measure it like you know 1 meter, 2 meters, 2 centimeter whatever it is and it has two end points that is A and I hope you understand what is line segment. Let us move on to the types of lines. The first type is a parallel line. So when the distance between two lines is constant, then these lines are called as parallel lines. Let us draw two lines. These two lines would be called parallel lines if the distance between two lines is always constant. If the distance let us say between two lines is A, A, A everywhere. Uh, that is why it is a parallel line. One more important thing you should understand this distance not necessary it has to be a perpendicular distance. But to understand this concept let us see I will draw two parallel lines and you can see these two lines which I have draw both are of angle 70 degree 70 degree and both lines are equal in distance. So in this case also the above two lines are parallel lines. So just understand this concept clearly and keep in your mind that distance between two parallel lines not necessarily should be perpendicular. Let us understand the transversal line now. The line that passes through two lines in the same plane at two distinct points is a transversal line. Let us draw two lines and the line which passes through two lines, let us, I will draw it in red color. Yeah, this line, this is a transversal line. So these two lines, it looks parallel, but not necessary. This line L1 and N2 has to be parallel. So this line can be intersecting line as well. Uh, you can see like this. And if there is another line which is passing to this red, this is called as 
transversal line. I hope you are clear with the concept so far. The next type intersecting lines is pretty straightforward as the name suggests two lines which intersect each other called as intersecting line. There are two lines like this. So you can see these intersect each other. That is why these are intersecting lines. Moving to coincident lines. The lines which overlap with each other are coincident lines. These lines make zero degree angle between them. So, let us draw one line L1 and I will draw another line L2 overlapping that line. These lines L1 and L2 are coincident lines and you can see they make zero degree angle between them. Let us understand the concurrent lines. Two or more lines which pass through the single point are called concurrent lines. The word concurrent means at the same time or agreement. You can see we will draw these lines through a single point. What is same between these all points is this single point. Hence this line conquers, you can call it as concurrent lines. This is how you should remember it. Let us move on to the next important concept that is what is angle. An angle is formed when two rays are joined together at a common point. Let us understand rays in detail before we proceed further with angle. The ray is a line which has only one end point that is a definition of ray. So, you can see this drawn picture it is a line with only one end point and that is ray. Now, how does this ray differ from a segment? You can see segment has two end points and the line differs because it does not have any end point. That is a precise difference between ray, segment and line. This is very important concept you must understand. Moving back to the definition of angle, an angle is formed when two rays are joined together at a common point. You Let us draw two rays like this and this will be your angle theta. The common point between two rays is called as node or vertex and the two rays are called as arms of the angle. You can see these are the arms of the angle. I hope you are clear with the angles, its arms and its vertex and an angle is represented by this L shape symbol. Let us move on to the types of angles now. Before we getting into it first we should understand how to measure a angle. All the angles that we measure are always from positive x axis. Let me quickly draw the quadrant. On quadrant you can see it. So, this is our quadrant. This horizontal line is x axis and this is the direction you should measure the angle. Now, what is acute angle? It is the angle that measure less than 90 degree. So, the angle lies between 0 and 90 degrees. Here theta is an acute angle. Coming to right angle, the angle that measures 90 degree is called as right angle. In this case, the value of theta would be 90 degree and we also call this as perpendicular angle. An obtuse angle is an angle that measures more than 90 degree and less than 180 degrees. So, here the value of theta would be greater than 90 and less than 180 degrees like this. Theta is obtuse angle over here. Straight angle is an angle that measures 180 degrees. It is also called a straight line. You can see this straight line and the angle the theta would be 180 degrees over here. The important thing to understand and remember over here is the straight line makes angle of 180 degrees into reflex angle that is the angle which is greater than 180 degrees and less than 360 degrees. So, your theta is greater than 180 and less than 360 degrees. You can see this is our reflex angle where theta is between 180 and 360 degrees. Let us move on to the last angle that is complete angle. An angle that measures 360 degrees is called as complete angle or full rotation. To understand this, let us draw ray 1 and now draw another ray overlapping that ray. You can see this ray 1 and 2, they in total make angle of 360 degree with each other. This is nothing but a complete angle or a full rotation. Now, we understood all type of angles. Now, let us understand what is interior angle and exterior angle. Interior angles are those that lie inside the polygon or closed shape having sides and angles. 
let's take a polygon to understand what is interior angles i will draw any any polygon let let's draw a hexagon over here to understand it interior means inside which angle is formed inside this will be our interior angle this angle is formed by the two sides of this polygon which let's denote it by i moving to exterior angles these are formed outside the shape between any side and the extended from adjacent sides so let's extend any of the line and you can see this angle which is formed you can see this angle e which is formed between the side and the extended line is called as exterior angle let us understand the last important concept that is angle bisector an angle bisector divides the angle into two angle with equal measures let us draw angle and draw a line or ray to divide this angle now if this line or ray divide this angle into two equal angles then it will be called as angle bisector since this line or ray is dividing it into two different angles that is theta this is a angle bisector now the important property of the angle bisector each point on the angle bisector is equidistant from the side of angle or from both arms i have drawn three and you can see these points are equidistant from the both arms friends thanks for watching this video if you liked our work please hit a big like and subscribe our channel thank you